we're on the prowl. Hello and welcome to On the Prowl. Uh, I'm Kieran, this is Kevin, and we're here with the legendary Vikram Rao, former uh, executive editor for sports, uh, about to graduate in a couple weeks, but... Yeah, unfortunately. But uh, still very much attuned to Princeton sports and what's going on, so we're happy to have him with us today. So uh, let's just get started. Men's lacrosse, falling to Harvard, 9-8. Uh, very close to getting into the Ivy League tournament, but also just a couple shots away from not getting in at all and missing the NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I was at the game. It was uh, very similar to the Harvard game two years ago in terms of weather. Both games were pretty rainy. Um, both games were close. But uh, this time, Princeton came out on the losing side. Um, like many games this season, they started quickly. They scored three goals, uh, went up 3 nothing, and then kind of let things get away from them. They were down 6-3 uh, before they knew it. And then they kind of clawed their way back, but never really, you know, scored that, you know, all-important tying goal. And at the end of the game, uh, down 9-8, they had the ball with about a minute and 40 left, if I'm not mistaken, had a possession, and... You know, there was no one really. They, they were just kind of tentative. It wasn't clear who was gonna, who was the, who was the play for, who was gonna take the shot, who was gonna step up. And in the end, the shot that was taken was not a very strong shot, not a very good shot. Um, you know, and Harvard was able to kill the clock and win the game. Now, kind of when when looking back at this season, uh, you know, it's obviously not over yet. But do we think of this more as kind of a one-off, a kind of anomaly, or is this perhaps unfortunately more indicative of what's to come in the future? It's kind of tough to say right now. Um, you know, I think we'll have a better answer to that question within a year or two. But, um, you know, certainly injuries played a huge part in this season. This is a team that lost its two, you know, really dynamic offensive players for the season. Mike Chan and Chuck going down at fall ball, the midi who was uh, the Ivy League Rookie of the Year last year. And Jack McBride, who uh, was once a second-team All-American, didn't really play at all this season either. And those two guys were really uh, very dynamic players. They could take their man one-on-one, -on -one, score on him, even if their man was you know, first-team All-American. They're, they're proven players, and uh, they were the team's superstars offensively. And without them, it became really hard. Uh, freshman midi Tom, Thomas Schreiber, who was a very highly touted recruit, played very well. He's the team's leading point scorer this year. Um, but outside of that, I mean, honestly, you know, there's a lot of nice players, but frankly, it's kind of it's tough to recruit in the Ivy League. And what this team, at least offensively, looked like was sort of a team of role players at times. These were all, you know, very solid players. They could fill their roles. But without, you know, the two superstars on the field, it was very hard for the team to score goals. Um, and looking forward, you know, you'd hope that, that there's a Jack McBride or a Mike Chanichuk on the radar, on the recruiting radar. Um, and, you know, if there is, I don't think this will be a huge issue looking forward. But, um, you know, only time will tell. Princeton's postseason fate now out of its hands. Regardless of what happens next week, it needs Harvard to lose to Yale in order to qualify for the Ivy League tournament. There's also a scenario Princeton beats Cornell and Harvard loses to Yale, then Princeton qualifies. There's also a scenario where Harvard could lose, Princeton could lose, and Princeton could still get in. It would involve literally coin flips. But we'll see how that works out. Cornell, obviously, the top team undefeated in the Ivy League, so it's going to be a tough task for Princeton. And uh, the other big news this week, men's basketball hiring coach Mitch Henderson, class of 1998, to uh, come back home and take over the team that his teammate... Uh, Coach Teddy Johnson just left. Right. Uh, what do we think about that? Well, Mitch Henderson is the guy who's famous for that uh, the picture that was taken right after the shot went in against UCLA um, back in the uh, 1996 game. And uh, he was jumping up in the air with his hands up like this and with a childish grin. Um, I mean, you know, it looks it looks good on paper. He has a lot. He hasn't. He has no head coaching experience, but um, neither did Sidney Johnson, and um, you know, neither did Bill Carmody. Uh, he, he was on Carmody's staff, actually, at Northwestern for the right. last 11 years. Um, so he's very familiar with the Princeton offense. This is very much sort of like, you know, although it's not internal, it's sort of part of the Princeton coaching family very much. Um, an interesting move. Uh, not, nothing too unexpected, I guess, right. here, right? Yeah, everybody, since Pete Carrill left, all of the hires have been sort of part of the Pete Carrill family. Right. The last four of them have all been Princeton alumni. Four of, the four of the five, the four most successful, were all hired for, as assistant coaches. So you have to figure, assistant director Gary Walters, everybody else involved with this decision, they realize they've had success with Johnson, with Carmody, with John Thompson the third, in the past. So there's a track record there for Henderson to have success. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think this is very much just sort of in line with what we've seen in the past. I think one interesting question to ask is, you know, 
there was certainly talk prior to when he left that Sidney Johnson was, you know, going to be a kind of safe hero. He's going to stay here forever. He's an alum. Look at him crying on the podium against Kentucky. Look at how over the last four years, my four years on this campus, he's taken us from nothing to, you know, sports center top ten play um, and almost upsetting a Final Four team. Uh, and then he left. Um, and, you know, you wonder about Henderson. Is Henderson trying to stay here or does Henderson aspire to – I mean, he'd be if he was able to have success here at Princeton, he would be a great candidate for a Big Ten job. He knows that league better than any league at this point, probably. Right. Henderson did say at the press conference, quote, if I could be here as long as Kirill was, 29 years, sign me up. But obviously, words a little different once we get right. a couple years into it. Yeah, of course. Uh, the other really big spring sports coming up, baseball. Lots of rain was in the forecast on Saturday, so they pushed the games back. The first game just ended, Columbia won, but there's still three more left to be played between today and tomorrow. Big for the Ivy League race, Princeton's still currently at the top of their division. Yeah, and you know, I think uh, that's, you know, we're close to the end, about to wrap up spring sports, and I think overall, uh, looking back at this year, it's been a pretty exciting one, obviously, uh, especially with the men's basketball team doing what they did uh, in, in the Ivy League and in the NCAA tournament. Uh, a pretty high bar that hopefully when we get back in September, uh, we can you know start to see some more of that in the fall. You know, with the football team, they're getting ready for the spring game. Uh, yeah, the spring game on uh, on Saturday took place in a you know pretty pretty heavy rain um, at times, but uh, still a pretty productive game. I think one thing uh, to look out for next year is uh, linebacker Andrew Starks looked very very strong and. Uh, Played with a bit of a mean streak in the spring game, which was nice to see. I think he's 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 ready to go for next season. Um, and the uh, running back, uh, Brian Mills, who's a freshman this year, going to be a sophomore next year. Uh, played very well as well. Scored the first touchdown of the game. Uh, showed some great speed. Yeah, you know, I think this team is going to come back in the fall with something to prove, especially after what was, by all accounts, a pretty disappointing season. Uh, they're going to be ready to go, and that'll be uh, that'll be exciting to watch. And you know, hopefully, we can take some of this momentum or Princeton can take some of this momentum uh, through the fall and uh, give us another good, great year in sports. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, this year, you know, the only way to go from this is up, really. They had a lot of injuries, um, you know, new coach, new system. I think they'll, you know, cross our fingers, cross your fingers, fewer mm -hmm. injuries next season, and they've kind of learned the system a little bit better. I think they'll be a better team. Yeah, so uh, this, I believe, is the year's last on the prowl. Uh, so it's our last week of classes. So uh, enjoy that. Enjoy lawn parties next Sunday. And uh, we'll be back maybe something crazy in the summer. Maybe not. We don't know. Uh, but, yeah, we'll be back in the fall for sure uh, every Sunday again. But until then, thanks for watching. And uh, have a good rest of the year.